All right, in this video, we're going to go through entering bills for items and expenses. Okay, so hopefully you've already watched the previous video, how to enter a bill just for expenses side. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the features or the like buttons on a bill um, because you should have watched that video already. So entering bills for items and expenses. So I'm going to come in here to enter bills. Now, again, the first thing that we want to do is fill in the information. So ready mix concrete as an example, and it pre-fills in for me. Um, reference number, right? The terms are set up. I'm going to put a class in here. Okay, so we're going to talk about down below. This is the most important part. So we have our expenses tab and we have our items tab. So what's the difference? The expenses tab points straight to a general ledger account code. Right, I can go in there and say this is job related costs, right? And it sticks it into job related costs. And I can put in a customer that I'm, you know, an amount, $500, and it's for this particular customer, okay? Um, I can choose if it's billable or not. In the newer versions of QuickBooks, you can turn off, right, if you want that billable box to automatically check. So in the older versions of QuickBooks, that billable box checks off as soon as you add a customer, right? Checks off billable. <laughs> uh, in the newer editions of QuickBooks, that is a preference where you can say don't default to billable, and so it'll leave it as unchecked, okay? And we have other videos on why, you know, billing for time and expenses that you can see what that's all about. Um, the other reason it's taken away a class too is that in enterprise I do have the ability to have a default class based on the customer I choose or the name I choose. Um, so that's why it keeps on going away because it's trying to pull out that default. Okay, so going back to the real reasons for this video, expenses versus items. So job related costs I can put in here. Um, I can put it you know, to an asset account if I want to. So it's basically our balance sheet and our PL, all the accounts that are available on our balance sheet and our PL, we can point to on the expenses tab, which is helpful, right? I need to know how much I had in licenses and permits. I need to know how much I spent on cleaning and janitorial. Okay, but why would we use items? So items allow us to break down details. So again, job related costs. What went into that job related costs? I had concrete. I had wall framing, I had roof framing, right? So all of these items point to an account on the general ledger as well. But by breaking it down by item, I can see the details, right? Again, they all pointed to job related costs. Instead of just seeing $500 to job related costs, I can say I had $500 to job related costs, $100 you know, 20 was here, 180, I have all these pop-ups, was here, and notice it's calculating for me so I don't have to do too much math, $200 was here, right? So I can break out what in, you know, what exactly I spent on those job-related costs, okay? Now, um, using the items tab, of course, you want to watch the videos on how to set up items so that you know where they're pointing towards, which GL account code they're pointing towards. However, if you have a question, you do always have this transaction journal, right, which is going to show me behind the scenes concrete points to job related costs, wall framing, job related costs, roof. So it shows me which accounts those items are pointing to. And then, of course, I still had the $500 that I didn't have an item tied to that went to job related costs. So you can see the benefit already by even just looking at this report. I spent $500 on what it tells me right there. Okay. All right. A couple things that are different about the expenses tab and the items tab as well. Notice the expenses tab doesn't have a quantity. So uh, I can put in here quantity of 1 times 120, but most likely it was something like a quantity of 10, right, times 12. And notice if I put in quantity of 10 times 12, it does figure out for me that it comes out to 120. I can do it the other way around as well. So if I said I had a quantity of 18, and I know that my net was 180, or my you know total was 180, 
then it'll back into my cost for me of ten dollars so you can do it both ways also as I mentioned in other videos any time you're dealing with any fields that are no, numerical fields only they are calculators so it was 5.25 plus 4.12 plus 3.28 right gets us to 12.65 times $20 an hour okay all right so again that's why you would use an items is to break out some details for those expenses. Now most of the time if we are not dealing with, you know, doing dealing with inventory or doing some kind of construction, right? It's fine to just point it to the expenses tab. So you wouldn't want to come in here and have a whole bunch of items for things like like rent, let's say you have two buildings and you you have an item for rent, main office and rent warehouse. No, we don't want to do that because, you know, just setting it up that we have rent right is just fine we know we pay five hundred dollars to one and fifteen hundred dollars to another so you wouldn't want to set up items for that this is mainly used for doing job costing inventory tracking um, you know making decisions and on your in your business right and so a lot of times it's going to be pointing these items are going to be pointing to what we call a cost of goods sold account right on the expense side Okay, because they're direct costs related to jobs. Now the two tabs, they do add up together to give us the amount of the bill. So right now you can see I said the bill was for a thousand dollars. Now down below here, uh, you can I, you know the total on the expenses tab is five hundred and the total on the items tab is five hundred fifty three dollars. So if I tried to say save, it's going to pop up and say this transaction is not in balance, which kind of keeps me in check. I can go, oh, you know what? I calculated this wrong. This was only supposed to be 12.6 hours for $200 total. Again, it backs into my cost for me, gets me to that $500, and now I can say save. Okay. So that's the difference between using expenses and items on the bill. You can do bills with just expenses. You can do bills with just items. Or as you can see here, you can do both.